first cast got that square bill unit on and i am on the water god it feels good i'm on a big old lake right now that i hadn't been to in a while and i'm, I'm just glad to see it's not flooded it's actually down so i'm gonna try some bass fishing i'm also going to be looking for some gar today i know that sounds weird those two combos bass and gar but i got my gar fly with me and my big rod and this lake is known for having not only spotted gar and long nose, but the big old alligator. So what I'm doing right now is I'm fishing a, a, just a, an edge. Uh, as I'm going back in this creek, I like these just little boat docks back here. I'm throwing this square bill because I got a rocky bottom and there's a, a bit of a color change. Uh, it looks like they've been pulling water. Oh my. There's a carp. Let's switch gears for a sec. I'm gonna take me a saucy at 4.8. I'm gonna stick it on a three quarter ounce jig head. I'm gonna stick it down in the depths on a post spawn point and see if we can get bit by something large. Okay, I've got some fish marked here. I'm about 50% sure that some of them are stripers, but those are still fun. And this is a post spawn, like really good looking bass spot as well. So make sure we get our drag loosened up just in case old Megalodon decides to get on board here. I'm on the deep side throwing to the shallow side. So I'm in like 25 throwing up to 15, like a 10 foot drop. This is a little bit farther than a deep diving crankbait will typically go. And I really like to throw these swim baits in stain to clearer water in the post spawn. This, this lake's normally clearer than this, but. Oh gosh, got smoked. Boom. Whacked it, whacking it, whacking it. Gosh, missed him. Oof, violent. <laughs> Man, I got bit three times right there. Oh, yeah, got that one. There we go. Uh -huh. Hit it like a ton of bricks. Spooned him. Oh, it's a drum ski. We got everything down there, folks. Everything down there. <laughs> got him up on the spoon. Ah, that is just a clear sign everything is down there feeding the drums usually get the leftovers because they're the slowest of the slow okay i'm gonna try to hit this with the deep crank wow i find it hard to believe i did not get stroked on that it was a 15 foot high spot right there I might have pushed these fish out when i got on top of them if I don't get bit on this cast, I'm gonna head up to this point where I've seen a bunch of birds dropping in on some shad. All right, let's push up there and see what we can do. Hey now, first bass, spotted bass. On the old log, five inch. Just twitching it around here. There we go, nice little bass. I really don't know much about the, the spotted bass spawn. You know, I, I've always heard they, they spawn a little bit deeper, but I've, I don't think I've ever caught one off a of bed. They're kind of a mysterious spawner. This is a really good post spawn technique right here. Just taking any kind of stick bait and just twitching it at the surface. And there's a lot of fry garters up in the shallows. So I was trying out deep, I didn't get any bites. So I came up in here just to kind of see what was going on. And uh, we got our first first bass bite. 
So we're definitely gonna give these marinas a little harder look. Got it. Oh no, that's a cable. Put my spinner bait in your face. Anyway, um, trying to get a little spinner bait bite going here on a just a point coming out of a spawning pocket. Just don't know what these bass are really doing here. This lake being so far down, they ought to be on this though. I tell you. Just made myself what some people call in the biz a run and i've gone to some clear water a few miles up the lake oh my god that has to be a big catfish i mean a whopper holy cow he has shad in his mouth i'm out here on that main lake right now I'm trying everything. Just picked up a crankbait and I hit the point. Didn't get any bites, but I could see a couple of fish sitting in that nine, 10 foot zone. So I'm just dragging a finesse jig, a little juicy half ounce. Oh, wait a second, gar. The gar. Oh, I see you. Oh, we're gonna do straight dangle on you, sir. Where are you going? I see a bass. Oh, that's a bass coming to get that fly right now. Oh my. Well, this is a very interesting situation we have here. I saw a gar, I got my fly out, and a bass, a good bass, like three or four pounders, just cruising here. What on earth? Oh my, oh my, I think we have found the nursery. That is a little striped bass. Not yet ready for the world. I'm just throwing a little crappie jig back here, seeing, seeing what we can get into. I'm, I'm getting thumped. I am in the very back, very back of the creek. The water is about three or four degrees warmer than the other parts of the lake. Oh yeah, got him. Begging. Begging. It's a tiny little spotted bass. Not even a largey. Very, very small. Oh my. Whew. That was a zinger. I don't know what that was. Looks shiny. Oh, there's one. What do we got here? This is the striped kind as well. Oh gosh, you made me bleed. Savages, absolute savages. Started seeing a bunch of little marks on the graph and thought they might be at least some little bass, but they are looking like they're gonna be stripers. Oh. <gasps> Gar, and I'm hooked up on something. That's a stick. No, this gar's right in front of me. Keep cruising in here and fishing for whatever. We might find the right one. Oh, we gotta get this fish. Come on, man. Got a bedding bass. My second one of the year. 
Oh, oh. Nipped it on the little weightless. Okay, now. Now it's time. I think the key with this fish is. Oh, you snapped at it. I think the key is to not let it sit there for too long. Every fish is different. Amazing, amazing how gingerly they can just bite it. I wanna see how big this fish is. Let's see if it's like a two or a three. Got him that time. Oh my gosh. I just want to see. Oh, how many times have you been caught, dude? I see one spot over here. Yeah. <laughs> You've seen a lure or two. Finally got him on that little juicy. Goodness gracious. I've never had a fish just whack it so many times, come after it and then actually not catch them. How are you? Good, how's it going? Pretty good. How the crappie button? Uh, not great. Not great? <laughs> the other day they weren't, but we're trying again tonight. <sighs> Hope you whack them. Everybody going after crappie. I wanna show y'all something on that jig. Both the pinchers were missing. So that fish hit it so many times, knocked the pinchers off, finally grabbed the whole thing. Finally got him, man. I saw that. He was stubborn. <laughs> it looked like it. Catch anything yet? Oh, nothing big. Not a whole lot of fish. You know? Pumping this long out. Yeah, that's why. That's why the bass are all screwed up. I bet. Yeah. Oh well. When you go to the ponds, you light them up. <laughs> you can't compete with ponds, man. <laughs> so good. See ya. You go, you go stab them now. We're trying a little bit of everything. I'm about to stab them too, they're tough. Real difficult out here today. And I know why, I know why, because of the water. They, they just, they've been sucking it out. They're putting it where I live, which we don't need any more water, please. You know, let, let the water stay in here. The, the water being taken out, the bass is trying to make a bed Get situated and then the water drops what are they going to do they're, they're going to move they're going to move out deeper or they're just going to wait till the water stabilizes so it's not always about water temperature sometimes it's about just the overall stability of the water if you have just good stable conditions without a ton of rain and the water's not fluctuating sometimes the bass will spawn when it's like 60 degrees or you know maybe they'll wait until it's like 68 70 degrees i'm sure they've already had a really good spawn here you know in the, like a month or two ago but i'm looking for that second wave so i caught me a second wave fish not a very big one you know two and a half two and three quota maybe i was expecting to see a ton of cruisers i ended up seeing a lot of little tiny little bass and then a couple of decent ones swimming around but they were they were not apt to bite Can't get him going today, y'all. The force, the fish force is not with me. At least I still get to come out here and fish. I heard somebody comment on my fish brain page that they can't even fish in the state of Washington. Like, there's a state order not to fish. What? What? I'm heading in, y'all. It's getting dark. Mother truck and turkey running in the field right now. Little hen. Y'all want to know what's unbelievable? I'm an adult outdoor man in my 30s and I've never gotten a turkey, never harvested a turkey. 
Oh, good morning, everybody. Man, got in late last night, slammed pizza, went to bed, woke up with a flare exotic shirt on. Can you believe that? I want to show you all what my lovely wife did yesterday. She moved all these rocks and made a pathway to our chicken coop. This just makes things real nice here in the morning. You just come out here, just, you know, get your coffee. Come out here, high step it. Over to the rack of the roost. Okay, let's see what we got here. The bobcat has been back one time, y'all. I'm gonna tell you what is extremely frustrating, too, about how this bobcat goes up on this wood pile. This is the one place that I've just consistently uh, kept kept the trap going you know it's it's I worry about the traps a lot of times with letting the chickens free range and then having Emmy out here but just watch this the bobcat goes and like shimmy steps just on that right side of that wood pile right there okay look at look at his finesse little feet and he's just he's just thinking about these these little chicks in there these little pullets and that duck you come over here and just look at this now I put this uh, this piece of wood right here right now so that won't happen again but it's like it knew this was here and it was more well hidden before like it was in a nice crack and covered up with leaves but I just wanted to jump up there and get clapped you know it's like it knew the trap was there and it stayed on this right side so it could get on top I mean this is a clever cat y'all so I've looked at some of y'all's comments on it's ways to enhance uh, the paw traps and just ways to conceal them more and attract uh, the cat. Let me all mention like putting a, like a fur tail or something like that, you know, like a fake, just something curious, like literally like you would think a house cat. It definitely keeps lingering around though. There was like four or five days where I thought, eh, it's been defeated. It's going to go off in the woods. It's going to tell all the bobcats and the foxes like, hey, you can't get into the rack of the roost. It's locked down now. Not the case. Hunger kicks in. Pew! predators instincts they just keep coming so we're gonna try some new things I'm try to get the cat eventually either by hook or by crook we will get the kitty <laughs> today I'm gonna leave y'all with a glimpse of what is to come here where I normally park my boat so uh, the boat is being parked here we got a bunch of rock that we're moving in but I'm, I'm setting up an area right now I'm building this is probably one of my like biggest projects I've ever done. That's that's the biggest currently. Um, next to it, this isn't going to take me nearly as long, but it's just bigger, heavier stuff, is building a second driveway and then having to build up a, a small retaining wall. This is what I've got going so far and I want this to basically look like a park. Like if you're pulling into a camp space, you know, you know, hook up your RV, all that fun stuff. That's the look I'm going for. So I've got railroad ties, I've got some of this rock right here. I've got a base of that set up. I'm going to stake it down into the ground. It's going to be uh, probably two tiers high. And I've just got to add a little back support back here. Not an engineer. Don't know what I'm doing. Uh, but what I'm thinking, look at this caterpillar. Look at him go. That's a chicken treat if I've ever seen one. So what we'll do over here, OSG already proved it is we're gonna put some dirt inside of here along with our rocks and then we're gonna plant herbs in these cracks, in these little crevasses here. And those herbs are gonna be used as bug defense in our chicken uh, coop and run. For those of you that don't know, natural herbs that keep bugs away, rosemary, mint, what's the third one? Oh, um, spearmint. Spearmint is another form of mint, <laughs> but I like it. I'm gonna roll up my sleeves here before the storm comes in and I'm gonna get it done. So next time y'all see this area, it is going to be pretty daggum sweet. And babe, you've done an awesome job over here. Thank you. Know, you. You're the finesse. Oh my gosh, I'm just over my here. muscles right now because they're, they're yeah. the rocks yeah. all. Actually, she's the muscle, okay? This lady's got some arms. Anyway, it's just a fun little project we're working on to make our little camp, so to speak, uh, more campy. Because look, I mean, look at our house. Our looks, like we're, looks like we live in a state park. And I like that. So add a little signage. Maybe get some of y'all awesome creative people out there to make some uh, park signage. You know what I'm talking about? A little brown, brown sign with a little yellow lettering carved out. Anyways, thank you for tuning in to this on the water and outdoor experience here in the backyard. I will see you very soon. God bless you. Later.